This is the story of the last place on earth where they build steam locomotives. Datong, on the borders of Inner Mongolia. It's also a story about working for the state in China. About being an industrial worker in a country where 80% of the people are peasants. a week at Datong, they test out a brand new steam engine made in the local factory. They check the oil, tap the tie rods and test the steam pressure for the first time. Steam locomotives are the pride of Datong. Most of the time, since the revolution in 1949, the industrial workers have been China's elite. Better pay than the peasants, a guaranteed income, a job for life. But there's a price to pay. Constant supervision by the state and the party. Uh. Uh. Significant aspects of a worker's conduct and attitude will be noted down in his personal file. The Communist Party organization has unique access to a worker's file throughout his life. Party branch meetings, like this one at the locomotive factory, will discuss applications for membership with great care. No one has to join the party. If you want to get in, you must apply. In this factory, one in eight of the workers is a member. But once you've joined, it can open the door to a wealth of opportunities, promotion, travel, even the chance of influencing your own fate and that of others. Whole careers depend on decisions made at meetings like this. Every word that is said will count. Yang looked a very promising candidate, but this won't be the end of the selection process for him. His comrades on the shop floor must ratify his acceptance by a show of hands, so it pays not to step out of line. If no one on the shop floor objects, the decision is referred onward and upward from this committee to the factory managing committee. In a few cases, the Datong City Committee will be asked to decide if the applicant is suitable. No effort is spared to weed out someone who doesn't fit in. Here, they found a problem with applicant number two, another Mr. Yang.
，不怕苦，不怕累，确实是个好同志。但是这个同志啊，比较年轻嘛啊。啊，你。你在这四十，有些个工作上啊，恐怕还是不够太扎实吧。嗯。呃，我个人也好，优点当然比同志多少。我考虑啊，还是再研究研究，啊，再考一段时间最好。好好好，啊，接受党的教育培养还是不够长的。既然大家都有这个意见啊，希望能够。提交支部大会讨论，我看也是可以的，啊，可以啊，我看你可以的。After the meeting around nine in the evening, the party committee takes a break. They visit the recreation hall. 45 feet underground and serves also as a fallout shelter. In case the polar bear comes, they'll tell you. Meaning, of course, the Russians. Tonight, down here, there's a special event. The party secretary of the whole factory has just returned from important meetings at the Ministry of Railways in the capital, Beijing. Happily, the party secretary brings good news, so there's some cause for celebration. Beijing has announced that the future of the factory and of these workers is secure. Steam engines will be part of the next five-year plan, though the output target is reduced only 230 a year, and that can easily be achieved. It's all just as well. This factory's only customer is the state. Its only product, steam engines. Work goes on all night, not because of the volume of output, but because they melt and pour their own steel, and that requires so much electricity. If they were to switch this on in the daytime, they might black out the whole city of Datong. mining school. Around this time of the morning, students and workers all over China will be limbering up, probably accompanied by exactly the same music. The recording is exercise music number six, pressed in Beijing in 1958. morning shift are coming on at the railway yard. They're entering a world of rules, instructions and guidance. Celebrate May the 1st with achievements in production, says the blackboard. Clocking on. 6.50 a.m. Hello. 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 Thank you. 
The Chinese Railway Rule Book prescribes an almost military protocol. Only after receiving the official invitation can the fireman get on board. If you follow the rules, they say, you won't go far wrong. The steam locomotives of Datong are built to take coal to the rest of China. Coal still provides 70% of all China's energy. Datong sits on one of China's richest coal fields. So if things go seriously wrong here, that could affect the economy of the whole country. The Dartong area is like the Rhonda Valley used to be. It's the Ruhr, the West Virginia of China. In China, you are what you do. Often the first question you're asked is, what unit are you from? The answer here, factory 428, the steam locomotive plant. On giant placards, forward-looking comrades are depicted side by side with the space shuttle. The lesson, China must modernize. Clocking in here, 7.30 a.m. You turn over a wooden token with your name on it. Black means present, red means absent. This is Gung Pei Hua, a 23-year-old girl apprenticed as a welder. She works side by side with her master for up to a year until she's fully trained. Apprenticeship has a long history in China. Twenty-three percent of the workers in this plant are women. They are especially favored on the overhead cranes. The works manager said that they take more care of the heavy items. They can pick up and put down a whole locomotive without chipping the paint. There are no jobs in this plant which a woman can't do. So the state requires the factory to organize a system of child care. If the trained women of China are to work, then the state factory will supervise their children. In fact, they really will look after a worker from the cradle to the grave. This is the mid-morning nap at the factory kindergarten. Eleven o'clock. A steam engine is taking shape. It must be ready for testing on the tracks that very evening. At least once an hour, Gang Pei Hua stops work to receive a short lecture from her master on safety, or technique, or output. Under the current plan, they have to produce one locomotive every working day, so it pays to listen. Ah. 
12 noon, lunch break. Everyone gets an hour and a half, so do the children. They are fed free of charge at the kindergarten. These are tomorrow's workers. They must be looked after. Two o'clock, the finishing shop. The factory was built by the Russians in 1954. If it's big, it must be modern, was the keynote then. In many ways, heavy industry is still run on Stalinist lines. Decision-making is centralized in Beijing. Quotas are set. The local management have little room for maneuver. The government is trying to decentralize now. Managers may make suggestions there is room for improvement in design and technique. But basically, Factory 428 produces just one product. It has produced more or less the same product since the 1950s, one a day, because that's what Beijing wants. It's a nine-hour day, including lunch. At 4.30, the whistle goes. Geng Peihua cycles down the road to the company's shop, or back to the company flat, or across to the company's school to pick up the neighbor's children. When this little girl gets a job, the chances are she will not have chosen it herself. It'll be in Datong and on the railways, because that's where her parents work. Without a permit from the Public Security Commission, she will never be allowed to be resident outside Datong. <laughs> Gang Peihua lives with her elderly father and mother in a company flat that she will inherit when they die. Jobs too are often inherited in China. When her father became too ill to work, his job was given to the eldest unemployed child in his family. That happened to be a girl, Gang Peihua. Gang's father was an illiterate peasant before he got the railway job. For him, as for her mother, things have gone well since 1949. But what satisfies the older generation doesn't always satisfy the younger. Geng Peihua didn't choose to be a welder. She wanted to be a poet. Now she's educating herself. She's enrolled in the television Open University. On her one day off a week, she spends most of the time studying. If you don't join the party, education can be the other way up or out. When you're in Datong, 
you feel a long way away from the rest of China. In fact, you're only 180 miles away from Beijing. But you're right by the Great Wall. This was the very edge of Imperial China. Beyond lay Mongolia, Siberia, the barbarians. It still takes a whole day to travel up to Datong from the capital, through the winding pass at Badaling, up into Shanxi province. Fifteen hundred years ago, this was the pass used by the Chinese army to reach the Mongol frontier. There, they built a new town, Datong, where they could meet the Mongols in a new era of peace and harmony. In fact, the name Datong in Chinese means Great Harmony. Remnants of Genghis Khan's army can still be found, an unexpected sight. Peasants in the surrounding communes still use Bactrian camels to haul the coal up into the hills. Today the garrison, such as it is, is small. Datong may still be a frontier town, but it's a worker's town, not a soldier's. Almost a million people live here now, and so great is the crush on facilities in the city centre that they have to stagger their one day off. Gung Pei Hua gets Tuesday off, others may get Thursday or Friday. Husbands and wives can't be assured of the same day off. But not everyone has a job. 15% of the young people of Datong have no secure employment. This is one of the schemes they've developed to combat the problem. They call unemployment waiting for work. So this is the waiting for work shop. It was set up in 1980 and employs 27 young people. They say the service is rather better here than it is in the state-run department store. Yan Lanju was unemployed, or partially employed, for several years before he signed on here. In fact, he'd taken casual work as a painter. And he'd earned up to 80 yuan, 30 pounds, a month, a good salary. But his parents recommended him to take a steady job. Now he's a buyer for the shop. He earns only half what he made from casual labor, but it's a steady job. A steady job is very highly prized in China. This factory is run by the Mining Bureau. Its avowed aims are high quality products and economic efficiency, but also balance and the rhythm of work. But is the rhythm of work fast enough? China wants to develop and compete with Taiwan and Japan, but it suffers from acute overmanning. Because everyone deserves a job, then they'll try and find a job for everyone. Here, groups of six sit around a bench putting metal tags onto electrical wires. The whole thing could obviously be done faster by one simple machine but they want to employ everyone, and they can't afford the machines.
At least there's work for most people in Datong. On May the 1st, the Datong authorities often arrange group marriages. This was the wedding of 16 couples held in the trade union headquarters of the Mining Bureau. In China, a trade union acts rather like a personnel or welfare department. The civil ceremony consisted of signing a form the day before. This was essentially the public celebration. The master of ceremonies is the trade union youth organizer, a party member. He announced there would be games in which all 16 couples would compete. First, balloon blowing. Prizes were awarded, packets of sweets, one for the couple with the biggest balloon and one for the couple with the smallest. <laughs> then there was a playoff between the winners and the losers. Out in the main square, in front of the trade union building, one of Da Tong's frontier traditions, a lion dance, to celebrate May the 1st and the wedding. Finally, the private celebration. Each couple went home to relax. For this bride and groom, the best man organized a traditional test of skill. Could they drink a glass of wine together without spilling a drop? That evening, further celebrations of a more sober sort. 
the party secretary. That was the party secretary of Datong Co Bureau. Now an official group will sing a song inspired by the Russian tradition. If you are, in fact, a young miner like Guang Zhongfeng, life is somewhat different. He's 25, lives in a dormitory, and works a six-day week with no summer holidays. He has only a few days off on national holidays and the new year, like other industrial workers in China. Traditionally, miners were seen as the pariahs of Chinese society. Mining was dirty and unsafe. It was bad luck to mine deep into the earth. No one would marry a miner, they used to say. It's taking the government a long time to erase the old image of mining. Today, several of the mines are mechanized, mostly with foreign equipment. Maintenance isn't all it should be. Guang is one of the electrical engineers constantly on hand to repair the machinery. The Chinese have a talent for repair. Guang's job is to get things going again. Guang is one of a work group of 15 miners. They spend nine hours a day down the pit taking half an hour off for a packed lunch near the coal face. This is provided by the management and it's an important incentive. The right to a lunch break has been written into the Chinese constitution. <laughs> <laughs> However, in the struggle to achieve greater output, some aspects of miners' welfare are overlooked. Every day, the men spend an hour getting to the coal face. It's down here that accidents occur. Safety is seen by some managers as the responsibility of the worker. If he's hurt, it's his fault. As the Gongmen Ribao newspaper said in 1980, production is like war. 
to be wounded or to die is unavoidable. There are reports about fires in the mines, floods, carbon monoxide and roof falls, especially in Datong. The equipment is often primitive, unsafe. There is pollution, silicosis, all sorts of lung disease. This patient is called Shu Tianxing. He was Su Tiang Sheng was 27 when he had his accident. He was hit by the whiplash of a steel cable hauling a mine wagon and admitted to the miner's hospital. His pelvis was crushed, his thigh was fractured, he had to have part of a leg amputated. Prevention would be better than cure, and safety is improving slowly. But to date, it's been the job of the doctors to put workers back together again and get them back on the job as soon as possible. Skilled workers are too valuable to lose. Sue will be fitted with an artificial leg. But things are better than they were in Datong. Far up on the hillside outside town is a slogan, never forget the bitterness and suffering of the working class. On May the 4th, Youth Day, a group of older miners introduces students to part of their history. This is the site of an old mine shaft. Now it is filled with skeletons. This is a monument to what, for China, is like the memory of Auschwitz. There are still some people here who saw what happened with their own eyes. The director introduces one of the survivors. The
이게 뭔 소리밖에 없고 경제적 수법도 저것도 빠지고 봉구에도 소위야 가고도 좀보려 수법적으로도 많이 커지 근데 수법적으로도 많이 커 그냥 내는 소리 옆부터 숨어져 많이 커 그냥 버지도 저번주 보리 허구나 병원에 공구청소에 아직 부동산에서 보지 퇴를 보라 보이 호시 아직 무슨 아직 도전 이거 저거 뒤지는 그 그거 와 주지는 난조가 이 도시는 쇼고 와 이거 이거 뭐 보자 이 도시 마로 지라고 너 일본 너 저거 도와야 저 일본 난 파리 이야 파고 보니 이 보고 사람은 마로 고전 아직인가 부동산에서 사람 마로 지져봐 지금 우리 도라고 이런 그 충고를 지지마. 이 친구 리 벌이 쇼하고 코 보고 리 코어 지 보고 보자 보자 지 보고 보자 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 나가라 보자 나가라 아니 요수 말이라 보자 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 The people of Datong were dragged into the industrial life of the 20th century by the Japanese. There were two small mines before they came, 11 when they left. Heavy industry has been largely imposed on the Chinese from the outside. For many it still seems foreign, something associated with the Western powers, or the Japanese, or the Russians. But the people are taught that China has no hope of modernizing without heavy industry. The Chinese must learn to accept it wholeheartedly. They must learn from the past and do things differently today. Today, long hours are spent teaching and reteaching young people. But experienced teachers are few and far between in China. So many were lost in the Cultural Revolution. The need is great. Many young peasants still have to be drafted in from the countryside to fill all the mining jobs. Nurses are needed, technicians, accountants. Literacy, mathematics, and management skills all must be taught. 现在我们举几个例子。Learning the abacus is no easier for the Chinese than it would be for someone from the West. Today the manager of a Chinese mine has to calculate bonuses and wrestle with new incentive schemes. That requires maths. Miners pay scales range from 40 to 120 yuan a month. Different work groups earn different bonuses. Up to 10% of their average pay to be divided between 15 people. Not easy. China needs good managers now, even more than it needs skilled labor. Mr. Zhang is 67 and still teaching. But he's one of those who believe that miners shouldn't just know about equipment or accountancy. Mr. Zhang represents the oldest traditions of the Chinese scholar and teacher. For him, the aim is to raise the cultural level of his pupils. Yi 
与懂，对每一个人都是起到一个什么呢？影响特别很大。所以我们感觉，作为教育者，首先接受教育，这是最要紧的。而且我们不但教书，重要的是教人。因此呢，我的一言一行，对于我们的学生的教育很影响，影响很大。他是模仿性特别强，他一切都看你的，你做好了他就学好了，你做坏了他就学坏了。所以我们来说呢，一个教师就是一个被人所尊敬的园丁吗？所以一个园丁者，就是集耐心、教书。有耐心，要教人，但是主要的就是我们教人。你要把人教好了，首先我们做教育者，首先接受教育。On May the second, a group of workers from Mine Five were taken to the temple of Xuan Kong. As part of the effort to raise the cultural level. The authorities occasionally run works outings like this. This may be the first time these miners have ever seen a monk. This was intended as more than a tourist trip. Much can be learned from the temple of Xuan Kong. It is rich in evidence of China's past. How much will these young workers understand of what they see here? Some people ask, how relevant is all this to a miner today? Some say that raising the cultural level is useful, but raising the output of coal is more important. To increase productivity, China has been trying to develop new incentives for the workers. The party and the trade union meet frequently to discuss the new responsibility system. Should a miner be fired if he doesn't pull his weight? How can you sort out which individuals should get a bonus when they often work in groups? Should managers be paid more than workers? Until recently, the main incentives offered to miners were better accommodation, better food, and drink. Da Tong is one of the few places in China where the works canteen sells alcohol. Miners traditionally drink a good deal here. It's expensive, but most of them are bachelors, and there's not much else to spend money on. 
in the kitchens, the old socialist spirit prevails. The food subsidized. Everyone's equal. Everyone eats from the same pot. But for Guang, for all the miners, things are changing. For most of the last 30 years, miners, indeed all state employees, have been protected. They couldn't be fired, they had a contract for life. They used to call it the iron rice bowl. Guaranteed food, subsidized accommodation, enough pocket money for cigarettes and drink. If you played by the rules, you couldn't go far wrong. To be sure, life wasn't that easy. Mining's never been safe. There are still not enough women around. Holidays are few and far between. But basically, when you got your job with the Bureau of Mines, you were set for life. No longer. The new responsibility system doesn't only mean bonuses and incentives. It means that Guang can be fired if he doesn't work hard. Jobs are no longer so steady or secure. That's a policy being imposed from the top. It may change the world of Datong forever. 